Hi, this is Imre Galambos, professor of Chinese at Cambridge University. And this video is about using quotations in research papers, or to be more exact, how to quote something the right way, and how to avoid common mistakes. So we will look at how to use quotations to your advantage, rather than to your disadvantage. Because as with any device or technique, it's better not to use it at all than use it the wrong way. And so most importantly, we're going to see how you can achieve immediate results, how to improve your writing right away. So if you're interested, stick around. But before we do that, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Quotation is one of the basic devices in academic writing. It means taking a phrase, a sentence, or entire passage from an existing text and inserting it into your own writing. So in simple terms, this is the cut and paste method. And you borrow the quotation in order to discuss it, to illustrate a point, to show how exactly someone phrased an idea, or perhaps even just to use it as a motto that would inspire the reader, or to create a link with the text from which the quotation comes. Quoting means borrowing a string of words from an external text and using it verbatim. You may know that there is a whole internet subculture about misused quotation marks. And the examples are quite funny, but almost never intended to be so by the people who use the marks. Although such misused quotation marks are a fascinating topic, I will not be speaking about them here today. And here, we are not going to talk about the proper style of quoting, or that you need to use quotation marks or indentation to mark the borrowed text, or that you need to quote the original text correctly without typos or creative changes on your part, Instead, what I'm interested in is the use of quotations as a device to improve your writing. In a research article, we typically quote from either former, that is secondary scholarship, or primary texts. When we quote from secondary scholarship, it is typically so that we can engage with it. We may quote the argument of another scholar to critique it, or to use it in support of our own argument, or perhaps as part of an overview of former scholarship. And this is really just a way to position ourselves vis-à-vis -vis the current state of the field. We use the writing of others to show where we are in these debates and what our own take on the topic is. Of course, you do not necessarily need to quote someone verbatim. You can simply paraphrase or just reference them. By quoting someone, you accomplish something slightly different, in that you preserve the wording of the original, possibly because it's so well written, or maybe because it's so terribly written, or because you want to engage with how exactly the idea is expressed. So quoting is kind of like calling a witness to the stand, or playing a security video footage, or a voice recording. It is a means to show not only what was said, but how it was said, how it was expressed in particular. In general, quotation is a powerful device you have at your disposal when writing a paper, but it is not always used the right way. And here I would like to talk about two common mistakes I see often in the writings of students and young scholars. So mistake number one is quotation overdose. This is when the writer goes overboard and quotes one passage after the other without moderation, often in close succession. Most often this happens when they discuss a text or write an overview of someone's ideas on a particular subject. So they basically go through the original text or that other person's writing and copy out the parts they feel relevant. And of course, sometimes almost everything feels relevant. The problem here is that quotations are really more like condiments rather than ingredients. So if you overuse them, you're not only diluting the quotations, but also your whole paper. Quotations are too powerful to make up a third of your paper. If they're used in excess, they lose their power. They are like the salt of the earth. You see, that was a quotation. Now, if you go through this chain of quotations one by one, you can almost always see that most of them do not need to be quoted word for word. So many of them can just be paraphrased, told in your own words, which means that when you actually quote something verbatim, it's going to have a much stronger punch. Paraphrasing is like a jab, and the quotation is going to be the right hook. So you need a series of jabs before you can land a right hook. The exception is, of course, if you're publishing a primary text, and it's important that the text itself is published in full. But in those cases, the best thing is just to put the text in an appendix and refer to it in your own introduction. In general, you should consider whether you really need to quote something. So the question is to quote or not to quote. And the answer is do it sparingly or don't do it unless you mean it. 
The second mistake is unintegrated quotations. This is when the writer quotes a passage and just leaves it there for the reader to figure out how it fits within the larger argument. Often this is related to the previous point about overdose, namely that often a series of passages are quoted with only a couple of lines of explanation in between and the whole thing stops feeling as an article and feels more like a collection of excerpts in an app, like daily quotations or something. Often the writer feels that the quotation is self-explanatory, or that it explains what the writer himself wanted to say, and so they often make some kind of statement, and to illustrate that, they place a quotation afterwards, presenting it to the reader, kind of like, here you go, you see, I told you. But it is actually very important to integrate the quotation into your own writing. You need to weave it in within the fabric of your own narrative. And for that, you need to talk about it. You need to discuss it, explain how it is relevant, what its significance is, what it teaches us, what's missing from it. So you should never end a section or chapter on a longer quotation, but should always make sure to explain what's in the quotation and squeeze out every last drop of what's important in it for you. Returning to the cooking analogy, you need to mix it in thoroughly so that the taste is evenly distributed. Quotations need to be processed, not just inserted. In most cases, borrowed passages need to be introduced and then discussed. A full quotation is really more like a package. It has an introduction at the beginning and a discussion attached to it at the end. And it is only in this packaged form that you can integrate it into your paper. When it is on its own, it does not stick and will often feel like an orphaned chunk of text. That's why integration is so important. Ultimately, you're building your own writing and try to form a coherent narrative. And you need to make sure that what you borrow from elsewhere does not take the focus away from your own point. Quite to the contrary, it needs to nurture and feed your point. It needs to support your own argument or maybe serve as the punch back which you're hitting. In any case, it has to play a supportive role within your narrative and should not just be used to expand word count, which is sometimes the feeling I get from students' papers. And you should also remember that the whole point of quoting a passage is so that you can have the discussion. The passage is only there to illuminate the discussion or maybe serve as the starting point. If you don't know quite how to explain or discuss it, then you shouldn't quote it in the first place because it doesn't fit the context anyway. So these are the two mistakes I most often see. So number one is overdose, number two is lack of integration. It is very easy to correct these, and that means that you will immediately be much better off with your writing than before watching this video. Okay, that's what I wanted to say today about using quotations. Hope it was useful. Let me know if you have any comments or if there is a topic you want me to talk about. Thank you for watching. See you next time.